her particular problem was congestive heart failure. In essence, congestive heart failure can occur due to a multitude of reasons. You can either have a defect in your heart valves, in your heart muscles, it can be congenital. A lot of times, nowadays, it's due to heart disease where you don't get adequate blood flow to your heart muscle. After a heart attack, that heart muscle can die. And then over time, you're not able to pump precious oxygen to the vital organs of the body. Blood actually will back up, drain into your legs. You'll develop severe edema of your legs. You'll develop fluid in your lungs. And then not only is blood backing up to all the tissues of your body, but you're not pumping enough blood to things like your kidneys. So you can get into kidney failure. And then when your kidneys can't process the blood and you have kidney failure, even more fluid builds up. It's just this, it's a tragic mm -hmm. sequence of events. And certainly in her case, she spent the, the last month plus of her life in the hospital dealing with this. Uh, absolutely. First of all, though, I must uh, tell you, though, I was not involved in the direct care of Ms. Taylor. But in general, uh, congestive heart failure can be uh, quite a disabling disease process. About 5 million Americans uh, have congestive heart failure. But the good news is that heart failure therapy is improving dramatically. And in fact, many of them can get better. Um, and we do have uh, other modalities of therapy, heart transplantation, of course, for select patients, and even new devices, uh, what we call assist devices, that are very small that can help the heart pump more adequately. But let's talk really quickly about, I mentioned some of the causes of congestive heart failure, symptoms and warning signs. You know, if, if you're going through your daily life and all of a sudden you notice that you have constant new swelling in your legs, you're a little bit more short of breath than normal, particularly when you go to bed at night and lay flat, or you're short of breath when you're walking yeah, upstairs. upstairs. You, need to, you need to get checked out. Yeah, absolutely. And those symptoms are quite common when you think about it. Some patients do get short of breath, and, but it, it's usually a, a rather prolonged or insidious type of problem that gets more and more worse over time. And that's when you start to think about maybe there is something more than just a, a viral syndrome, the, the flu or the cold that's going on. And, uh, and that's where you should go to your doctor and have it evaluated. But we can do EKGs, just an electrocardiogram, to see if there's any blockages in the arteries. We also can do a simple ultrasound of the heart where we can actually visualize the heart and see how well it's pumping and see whether or not it's enlarged or not. Dr. Kabashigawa, I think it'd be helpful to show the, uh, p the audience and uh, viewers out there the difference between a healthy heart and a, a you know, heart, that, the could heart be, that, that, that could be consistent with conge congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this is the, uh, a normal heart uh, here, and uh, what's opened up is the left ventricle. And... Um, this is the mitral valve here, which is very important when we talk about heart failure because many times valvular heart disease can occur too, and this valve leaks quite a bit. That can also lead to an enlarged heart as well. And uh, again, this is the normal heart. You can see the size is about the size of your fist, more or less. Now, this is a diseased heart. This is uh, what we call uh, cardiomyopathy or weakness in the muscle of the heart. In the case of a congestive heart failure, when you have and the large heart, the heart does get very much dilated like this. And again, it could be due to many reasons, as, uh, as Travis pointed out. Blockages in the arteries uh, could be due to a virus that causes the muscle to become very weak. And in these cases, the heart does get larger and larger and begins to pump less well. And you can get more leak in the valves, and that all can lead to uh, more failure and more blood flowing back into the lungs causing more shortness. So when we say it's good to have a big heart, we're talking about <laughs> theoretically, yeah. emotionally having a big heart. But having yeah. a big heart, unlike having maybe a solid muscular frame, that's a bad thing. You do not want to have a big, overly muscular heart. And one of the things that people need to realize is diagnosing this, you know, echocardiogram, using the ultrasound machine, you can very quickly see if someone has an enlarged heart, if it's not adequately pumping blood flow. 